Hello and welcome back to the Victoria Marie e YouTube channel. I'm Victoria and here on this channel I feature all things scrapbooking and crafting. If that's something you enjoy, make sure you hit the subscribe button when you do, click the bell, that way you'll be notified each and every time a new video is posted. Today I am creating a 12x12 layout in celebration of my 41st birthday that I celebrated this past March. I usually make a layout for all of my birthdays and just to kind of talk about where I'm at. Uh, as I've made another trip around the sun. So what I did was I took just a few photos on my birthday and I printed those photos down to three by three square so I can make a photo collage on this layout. I like doing summary pages for special events versus making big, large projects. And I thought, you know what, this will be a perfect opportunity to do so in celebration of my birthday. So for this project, I'm using the Hip Kit Club Kaleidoscope Collection. This is from the January, 2022 kit and actually it has more of like a new year's theme to it kind of celebratory and i thought it would be perfect for a birthday so here are some of the materials i'm using i'm also going to be doing a little bit of stitching on this layout and you'll see that here in just a second so to begin what i'm doing is i'm creating a background i'm going to get this piece of pattern paper it definitely looks like a kaleidoscope scene and i really really like that pattern paper so i got the middle of it so i can save that extra bit for another project. I'm also going to layer in a piece of textured white cardstock from American Crafts and I kind of forgot that I was going to get the paper so I went ahead and added adhesive on the back in the middle of that textured cardstock. I decided to cover that with a little bit of washi tape so it doesn't stick to my page protector. Next I'm going to place a piece of pattern paper again from the kit in the center of the layout so this is going to be more of a vertical position, a vertical design. But before I lay that down on the background, I'm going to layer in two strips of pattern paper in that black and white sort of geometric design. Those strips measure about one by 12 inches. And then the blue pattern paper measures a little bit over five inches, I think by 12, something to that effect. Now I'm going to bring over my photo collage, which I've already kind of taped my photos together because it helps me to work with them in one unit. Before I start the construction on the layout, I do want to do a little bit of stitching. And this is something that I've been doing a whole lot lately. I've been teaching myself how to embroider. And one of the things I want to do a lot more is add more stitching and using embroidery stitches on my scrapbook layouts. So what I did was I took some DMC threads or floss, if you will. One is a light blue and one is a light green. And what I want to do is kind of a layered color. So I'm using two strands of each color. So it's going to be four strands total. And what will happen is those colors will layer together to give a really cool effect. And it looks really nice in person. Um, it's hard to tell the delineation between the colors here on the video, but hopefully you'll see what I mean. So I'm just going to go ahead and thread a needle. Before I start the stitching, I'm going to uh, draw a line going down vertically, leaving about an eighth of an inch between the sewing line and the pattern paper. And that's just a faint pencil line. And that's going to give me a guide for punching my stitching holes. And I'm just using my little piercer here. I've had this piercer in this mat forever. And I'm just going to pierce some holes. And I'm trying to make them as evenly spaced as I can. I, you know, if it's a little wonky, that's okay. None of this is perfect. But at least the drawn line gives me a guideline so I can at least have some semblance of a straight line. So I'm going to punch these little holes using my piercer. And now it is time to sew. One of the stitches that I like doing on a scrapbook page for this particular technique is a back stitch. So I'm going to start the stitch coming up from the back of the pattern paper. I'm going to hold it down with a piece of washi tape. Of course, you can tie a, a small knot if you want to. I'm going to cut that using my fabric scissors. Once I have that thread in the place, I'm just going to go ahead and do my back stitch. So I'll do one stitch and then skip a dot or a hole rather, come back up and then thread that through my previous stitch. And that's going to give me the back stitch. And I'm going to do that here on the left side of the layout, as well as on the light, the right side of the layout. And that's going to add just a little bit of texture and a nice little stitch element to my scrapbook page. This is a really great way to add in stitching without spending hours and hours of stitching. So in the background, I have a little Downton Abbey playing. <laughs> I'm watching television while I'm stitching on this layout. And it probably took me about 20 minutes, probably less than 20 minutes to complete the stitching on this project. Now that the stitching is done on the left side of the layout, I'm going to go ahead and repeat the same technique on the right side, just running down the pattern paper. 
Once the stitching is done, I'm ready to construct the rest of the layout. I'm going to bring over my photos. And again, I adhered all the photos together. And I also added some foam adhesive to the back of the photo. So it gives a little bit of dimension. Before I go ahead and lay everything down permanently, what I want to do is sort of audition some elements around the page. So I'm going to grab some of these embellishments from the kit. There's some wood veneer, some die cuts, as well as a sticker font, which you're going to see here in just a second. And I'm going to use this frame, which I, or one of these frames, which I cut in half because I'm going to separate those. And those are going to be considered an anchor on the top left and the top right of the layout, which you'll see here in just a second. This is a really great way to use frames on a scrapbook project is to cut them up and split them up and use them as a really cool element on your layout. Once I have these in place, I'm going to layer in some flowers. But before I do that, it's time to go ahead and lay down all of my photos. Now, I like adhering photos together like this because it helps me move them around the page. So just in case I change my mind, I can move one unit of photos versus moving them individually. Once the photos are in place, I'm going to go ahead and start working on the title. I'm going to use this die cut that says cheers. And then underneath that, I'm going to spill spell <laughs> year 41 using the sticker font that came in this kit. I love mixing different fonts. And if there are phrase stickers or die cuts that I can use for my title, even better, because it just makes the uh, design of a title a lot easier. I'm going to go ahead and adhere these down and I am going to put a little bit of extra adhesive. These are puffy stickers, but the adhesive on it's really light. So I'm going to grab my Barely Art liquid glue. I'm going to add some adhesive glue behind these letters so they don't fall off my page and they just stay right on there. Now, once I have those letters into place, I'm going to add a label underneath, underneath the title that says this year is going to be amazing. Once that's on there, I'm going to start adding in the flowers again, using that cut frame as an anchor and an anchor is just essentially a spot that you can build out to start your layered clusters and it can be essentially anything. So for this particular layout, it's going to be those cut chipboard frames. That's typically going to be larger and then I'm going to layer in some smaller and medium sized elements. So I'm going to play around a lot with these black and white leaves and I love the element of black and white on a very colorful layout. I think it provides a little bit of grounding and some distinction between the colors as well. So I'm playing around with these leaves, trying to figure out how I want to orientate them. And once I have the leaves on, I'm going to start adhering them down using a little bit of tape runner as well as some puppy squares to add some dimension. I'm going to layer in some smaller flowers, bring in a smaller element and those layer clusters are done. Now I have another label that I want to use and that says enjoy every moment because I do. I do try to enjoy every moment, moment as much as possible, particularly on my birthday. I love celebrating my birthday. Once all those elements are in place, notice I did add a tab. If you've been with me for a while, I always add tabs to my layouts, it's a thing. I'm gonna grab these wood veneer pieces here once the tab is in place. And those wood veneer pieces have adhesive on them, which makes it very easy to use. And I'm just going to add three elements, one at the top by the label or the tab rather, and then to each of my clusters on the right and left of the photos. Then I'm going to bring in a little bit of the chipboard elements, just layering in some little tiny flowers, just to add a little bit more texture and dimension to my clusters and a tiny bit more color. Once all those elements are in place, I'm going to adhere my journaling. Now I'm asked this all the time. How do I type out my journaling on vellum? What I do is I create a text box in Microsoft Word. I type out my journaling and then I just simply print it on vellum. I just run that through my printer and you can in fact print on vellum. Once my vellum text box is printed, I trim it up and then I add it to my layout using a little bit of permanent roller adhesive and you can barely see that adhesive behind that vellum. The vellum I use is called the Hero Arts Layering Vellum and it's fantastic. With that, this layout is done celebrating year 41. In fact, my birthday was in March. This layout is posted or this process video is posted in May. <laughs> and usually I post my birthday layout sooner than that. I love the stitching on here and you can barely see those colors coming together, but that's just a really fun way to add something unique to your pages and even your embroidery projects is by layering your various uh, threads together different coordinating colors to come up with a really cool composition. I love the way this layout turned out. I love that I have multiple photos on one spread. I love how colorful and light it is. And I love being 41. So there you go. To see photos of this project, head on over to the Victoria Marie blog. And before you go, make sure you hit the subscribe button. When you do, click the bell. That way you'll be notified each and every time a new video is posted. And I'll see you in the next one.